In a remarkable development, a massive carrier has been spotted passing through Starbase, raising questions about its potential role in SpaceX's future operations. Could this platform be used for transporting, landing, or even launching Starship? Let's take a closer look. Meanwhile, NASA's Viper rover, once at risk of cancellation, now appears to be back on track. At the same time, China is turning to private rocket companies to support the Tiangong space station, signaling an increasing challenge to the U.S. and SpaceX. Join us as we explore these developments on today's episode of Great SpaceX. At Starbase, preparations for the next flight have been progressing rapidly. But earlier this month, something unexpected caught everyone's attention. At noon on February 2nd, the USS John F. Kennedy aircraft carrier made its way past the Starship launch site. The ship was headed for the port of Brownsville, where it would be scrapped, marking the end of its 60-year history and four decades of service. A bit about this legendary carrier, it was laid down in 1964, launched in 1967, and decommissioned in 2007. Its primary role was in military service, operating under the U.S. Navy. Measuring 321 meters in total length, or 300 meters at the waterline, and standing 59 meters tall from the mast to the waterline, it had a payload capacity ranging from 22,000 to 82,000 tons depending on its loadout. It was powered by four steam turbines, making it a true powerhouse of naval operations. Now, while its fate is sealed, with scrapping set to begin soon, many, including myself, can't help but wonder, could a platform like this be used for Starship operations? And if not this specific vessel, could SpaceX acquire a similar platform in the future for launch, landing, and transportation? As far as landing goes, a massive platform like this could easily accommodate Starship, whether it's the ship or super heavy booster. In fact, it could support two different landing methods. The first and most straightforward approach would involve Starship landing on legs, with the platform functioning as a massive drone ship. SpaceX has already mastered drone ship landings with Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, but Starship's greater size and power require a much more robust landing structure. A carrier-sized platform could provide exactly that. Given the scale of the USSF JFK, multiple Starship vehicles could potentially land on it at the same time. Based on its dimensions, I estimate, it could accommodate up to five Starship prototypes in a single landing operation, an insane prospect that would revolutionize recovery operations. Of course, using this method would mean SpaceX would need to integrate landing legs onto Starship stages, something they have moved away from in favor of the Mechazilla catching system. However, landing legs could be necessary for future missions to celestial bodies like the Moon or Mars, making it a worthwhile design consideration. Alternatively, SpaceX could install a simple catching tower on the platform itself. This would allow for vertical landings using the Mechazilla arms, similar to what is planned for Starbase. Given the platform's payload capacity, it could theoretically support the weight of both a catching arm and the landing starships. However, this approach would require significant additional infrastructure, making the drone ship style landing the more practical choice for now. Regardless of the exact method, the advantages of a sea-based landing platform are clear. First, it would eliminate concerns about the impact of starship landings on populated areas and infrastructure, something that has been a major consideration for operations at Starbase. The ability to land at sea could make Starship recovery more versatile and efficient. Second, landing on a sea platform would optimize fuel usage. Starship wouldn't need to expend additional propellant for a return to launch site's maneuver, maximizing payload efficiency and overall flight performance. Third, a mobile sea platform would introduce flexibility to landing operations. Instead of requiring pinpoint accuracy at a fixed location, a carrier-like platform could adjust its position, reducing the complexity of Starship's descent trajectory. Clearly, platforms of this scale are making the idea of drone ship landings for Starship more feasible than ever, and the efficiency benefits would be game-changing. Beyond landing operations, such a platform, such a platform could also be adapted for Starship launches. While a launch site would require additional infrastructure, such as an orbital launch mount, a tank farm, and fuel lines, the benefits would mirror those of a sea-based landing. 
A mobile launch platform would provide flexibility in launch locations, reduce risks to populated areas, and free up valuable space at land-based launch sites like Starbase and Kennedy Space Center. Another compelling use case is Starship transportation. In the near future, SpaceX is likely to have two major operational bases, Starbase in Texas and Kennedy Space Center in Florida. If the Florida site lacks a production facility, or if one of the locations experiences a temporary shortage of available vehicles, a platform like this could be used to transport Starship hardware between the two. While the vehicles would likely have to be laid down for transport, I estimate that such a platform could carry at least five to six complete Starship prototypes at a time. And let's not forget Starship is only going to get bigger. With Starship V3 possibly reaching 150 meters in height, SpaceX will need a massive infrastructure to support future launches and landings. In the past, the company even purchased oil rigs for offshore Starship operations, though they later sold them. Could we see SpaceX revisiting that idea with an even larger platform like a repurposed aircraft carrier? Given the pace of Starship's development and SpaceX's willingness to push boundaries, the idea of a dedicated sea-based platform for launch, landing, and transportation seems more plausible than ever. With the right modifications, such a system could make Starship operations far more efficient, flexible, and scalable. So, what do you think? Should SpaceX acquire a platform like this for future Starship operations? Drop a let's use it in the comments if you agree. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already to stay updated on SpaceX's incredible journey toward the future of spaceflight. Next up, let's turn our attention to an exciting update regarding NASA's Viper rover. Just last year, the future of Viper was in serious jeopardy, despite the fact that the rover was nearly complete. NASA had cited cost concerns as the primary reason for potentially canceling the mission, leading many to believe that Viper would never make it to the moon. However, in a surprising turn of events, NASA has now taken steps to ensure that this critical lunar exploration mission can move forward. On February 3rd, NASA issued an announcement for partnership proposal, calling on U.S. companies to submit proposals to collaborate on the Viper mission and keep it operational. In a statement, Nikki Fox, Associate Administrator of NASA's Science Mission Directorate, emphasized the importance of this public-private collaboration, stating, Moving forward with a Viper partnership offers NASA a unique opportunity to engage with the private sector. Such a partnership provides the opportunity for NASA to collect Viper signs that could tell us more about water on the moon while advancing commercial lunar landing capabilities and resource prospecting possibilities. This means that NASA is now actively looking for a commercial partner to take responsibility for key aspects of Viper's mission. According to NASA's official statement, any selected partner would need to handle the integration and successful landing of the rover on the moon, oversee its science and exploration campaign, and ensure that Viper-generated scientific data is made available for analysis. Joel Kearns Deputy Associate Administrator for Exploration in the Science Mission Directorate reinforced the benefits of this partnership, saying, Being selected for the Viper partnership would benefit any company interested in advancing their lunar landing and surface operations capabilities. As for the timeline, NASA has set a submission deadline of March 3rd for initial proposals. Following this, organizations that pass the first round of reviews will be invited to submit more detailed proposals by the 2nd of May. The final decision on Viper's future is expected to be made this summer. If a suitable partner is chosen, NASA will sign a cooperative research and development agreement with the selected organization to fly Viper to the moon. For those unfamiliar, Viper, which is short for Volatiles Investigating Polar Exploration Rover, was specifically designed to search for water ice deposits near the moon's south pole. This region is of immense interest to NASA as the agency plans to build one or more lunar bases there as part of the Artemis program. Viper would serve as a critical scouting tool, helping scientists identify potential resources that could support future human missions. Originally, Viper was scheduled to launch as part of the Griffin mission on a Falcon Heavy rocket late last year. However, due to delays in the development of the Griffin lander and Viper's uncertain status, the mission was pushed back to late 2025. With Viper now seeking a new operational partner, it remains unclear whether the rover will still be included in the Griffin mission or if it will be reassigned to another flight. 
Regardless of these uncertainties, the revival of Viper is undeniably a positive development. Given that the rover is already near completion, there's a strong chance it will still launch aboard the Griffin mission later this year. And when it comes to executing, to executing such a crucial mission, no company is more reliable than SpaceX. Their experience with Falcon Heavy and their track record of success make them the most qualified organization to support Viper's journey. Do you agree? Shifting our focus to our last bit of updates, let's take a look at China's ambitious plans to expand its use of commercial rockets for space station operations. China is reportedly preparing to launch two cargo spacecraft to the Tiangong space station using privately developed rockets. The goal is to introduce low-cost resupply services, increase operational flexibility, and further integrate the commercial sector into China's space program. According to official reports, the two spacecraft involved in this plan are the Haolong Cargo Space Shuttle, developed by the Chengdu Aircraft Design Institute under the Aviation Industry Corporation of China, and the Qingzhou Cargo Spacecraft, developed by the Innovation Academy for Microsatellites of the Chinese Academy of Sciences. How long is expected to be launched aboard Landspace's Zhuchui 3 rocket, which is scheduled to fly later this year, while Qingzhou will be launched on CAS Space's Connecticut 2 rocket. If all goes according to plan, both missions could take place before the end of 2025. What makes this particularly interesting is that China is essentially following the same path that the U.S. aerospace industry took after the space shuttle was retired. When NASA transitioned away from the shuttle program, companies like SpaceX stepped in to provide commercial resupply and crew transport services to the International Space Station. Now, China appears to be replicating that strategy, integrating private space companies into the operations of the Tiangong Space Station. But here's the key difference. While SpaceX innovated and introduced new technologies that revolutionized commercial spaceflight, China's approach has been largely centered around replicating existing systems. The rockets being used for these upcoming missions, Zhuchui-3 and Connecticut-2, are widely regarded as copies of SpaceX technology. With this expansion into space station operations, China is positioning itself as a direct competitor to the US, as well as SpaceX in the commercial space sector. This marks the beginning of a new phase of competition between the two space powers. How will this dynamic evolve? Only time will tell. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Thank you so much for tuning in, and until next time, keep looking up.